just say that again. <laughs> Poly Polycystic ovarian syndrome. People have not heard of it, but it's a fairly common problem. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to explain to you what it does. It's impressive in, in what it can impact you on. Come over here for a second. So polycystic ovarian syndrome is a syndrome where you go inside, they see the ovaries mm -hmm. on either side of the uterus, the fallopian tubes. So the ovaries there are actually very slowly taking the eggs and making follicles around one at a time, once a month, mm -hmm. to release that egg into the fallopian tubes so you can conceive a child, potentially. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes, because of the hormone, a lot of follicles grow all at once. You get tons of cysts, polycysts, poly too many cysts, all over the ovaries. They release a chemical, like testosterone, that goes back up into the veins of the body, throughout the heart, uh, and being circulated everywhere, including to the skin. When it goes to the skin, it actually will affect the follicle of the hair. Mm -hmm. And as the follicle of the hair begins to stimulate new hair growth, you get thicker, darker, coarser strands of hair, and on places where you don't want that to happen, like on your face, it gives you an appearance like this. So polycystic ovarian disease is a fairly common problem that a lot of people don't think about. It is the first big un medical problem that we're talking about. Right. Now, it's normal for women uh, to have a little bit of extra testosterone in their body, but when they have too much, you end up with this condition. PCOS is the acronym. The hair you get is not just in your face, you get it in your back, you get it in your chest, you get it in all kinds of weird places where you didn't used to have it. When it tip offs, it also causes infertility. So if you're concerned, you see a gynecologist, mm -hmm. who's your first line doc usually, and they'll often send you to an endocrinologist, because there's a lot of things you can do about it. You can lose weight, which is one of the most important things. Mm -hmm. but, but in addition, one thing that really works well is take birth control pills, because it sort of normalizes and levels out the hormones in the body, so you don't have that hormonal headache happening to you. Uh, that makes sense. All right, now, yes. let's go on to the second most common cause of unwanted hair, and this is again a medical cause. The clue is, ignoring this condition can put you at risk for diabetes. What puts you at risk for diabetes? Sure. Insulin resistance. That's right, insulin resistance does. The body produces a ton of insulin, makes a lot of it, but if you don't use it properly, mm -hmm. it can run amok. And insulin becomes less effective if you, if you have too much of it because your body's not responding. So, let's do this little demonstration now. Let's pretend that this is the amount of insulin in the body. Mm -hmm. Those marbles represent in, in little bits of insulin. So I want you to take some insulin and put it back in the body. Caught those in Hades. Go ahead. All right. Put some more in there. Not quite. Now, I'm going to point something out to you. As you do this, as you make more insulin, mm -hmm. the insulin is actually stimulating testosterone creation also as part of the hormone mm -hmm. response. And that is changing the level of this canister. And if you take too much insulin, watch what happens to the hair over here. Ready? That's the skin. Oh. See the hair pop through? Yeah. Same thing happens. When you've got too much weight on board, the body can't respond to the insulin. You make a ton of insulin, it turns on the hair to make more individual follicles, and you end up with a lot of facial hair, body hair, where you don't want it to be. So factors that influence insulin resistance, in addition to abdominal fat, the belly fat we talk about all the time in the show, include looking like an apple as opposed to a pear. It's that shape change that causes such a big problem, and if you're concerned, endocrinologist is the first stop here. They are very good at treating this. There's a drug called metformin. Very commonly used because it makes the liver more sensitive to insulin that we use a lot, mm -hmm. and it actually works pretty well.